And now, Daniela Silibash. She scored a 10 in the set for exercises. Twisting double back after those slip flex. Uh, this is uh, Corbett style. Look at that. Double twisting back. And a punch forward twice in each direction. <laughs> Takes you back, this does. Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. My name is Dave Lees and today I'm thrilled to welcome a nine-time World and Olympic champion, Daniela Silovash. Daniela, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. Yes, did I get all of your titles correct? I don't want to leave any out, so. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I guess. Okay. So I am so curious what i see that you coach your daughter a lot i like to follow on facebook your daughter's progression so are you keeping her in shape during quarantine what is going on we try both of us to stay in shape uh, during this time um i don't coach my daughter anymore i used to um i kind of stay in the gym and watch her a little bit but now we're trying to kind of do conditioning um, she does the conditioning with her gym uh, almost every day. And um, I know it's kind of hard, but um, we're trying to kind of like help each other stay in shape. So. Okay. So can you still do all of your conditioning? I mean, I saw you have a, a mean handstand and I saw you doing your mount on beam in a video. I think I was hurting for about a week after that uh, mount on the beam. Um, <laughs> no, I cannot do a lot of stuff. Okay. you know but trying trying to encourage ava to condition so kind of i have to do it too so um uh, what can i say just a uh, few v-ups few hollow rocks and i'm done okay <laughs> so your daughter is very good on bars like you were so is that natural yeah uh yes it is she was um she showed you know that it was an easy event for her or an easier event for her since she was Lila. Uh, I look back at some scores from when she was like level two or level three, and she was like nine, eight on bars and seven on vaults. So I guess she is like me. <laughs> was bars always one of your best events? Or? Uh, for me, it was like bars, beam, and floor. Okay. Uh, so vault was so bad that I always said that bars, beam, and floor were my favorite. Okay. <laughs> so I, um, I was curious, you know, they're now allowing the gymnasts who are going to be born in 2005 compete in the Olympics when they're held, if they are held in 2021. You know, I guess, how do you feel about that? Do you think it's fair? Do you think it's not fair? Well, I just uh, heard that yesterday. I guess, I guess they posted yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I don't think I like it. I think, mm -hmm. uh, um, yes, we had to change the Olympics to next year, but... Um, it should have been the same rules as this year. Okay. I think that will have been fair for everybody as much as we can to be fair. But um, I guess it gives the opportunity for some of the girls to 
compete or get ready for the Olympics mm -hmm. uh, for next year, new girls. I know Simone has talked a lot about the stress going, thinking that she had three months left versus 15 months left. Do you remember what it was like three months before Seoul and your stress level at that time? Well, it's, it's, it is a lot of stress uh, thinking about going into the Olympics. Uh, for me, it was different, not different because uh, I'll say just different because during my time, not too many girls were competing in more than two, more than one Olympics. Mm -hmm. So I knew that this is my chance. It was my chance to compete in the Olympics. That's why we were so much more stressed. Um, I guess now during this time, you can compete in more Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to do all around. You can just be a uh, event specialist. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I'm not saying that it's less stress. It's just uh, um, you have more opportunities, I think. So I've always wondered, how known are the gymnasts in Romania in your day? Like, did everyone know who the team members were, I guess, around the country? Or, you know, what kind of national pressure was on you? Well, during my time, during the 80s and 90s, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, um, gymnastics was the sport in Romania, okay. to say like that. And uh, it was a lot of pressure from um, Federation, from the Communist Party um, to win medals. Um, I'm not saying right now, still pressure to win because that's what you want to do. But during our time, it was a little bit more pressure from higher up to win those medals. How do you, I guess, how does the Communist Party communicate that pressure do they let you know what the expectations are well, it went down you know from the top 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 it went mm -hmm. down all the way to the coaches and uh every time we went to a major competition we had um i guess our goal and their goal of mm -hmm. how many medals we should win okay <laughs> They let you know how many. That's great. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So how did you actually get started in gymnastics? Well, I was born in Deva, and um, that's where the National Training Center is right now. Mm -hmm. um, when Nadia and her teammates and with Bella and everybody, the National Training Center opened in Deva in my hometown, uh, Bella went around all the preschool kindergartens to kind of pick the little girls that he thought they were going to be gymnast. And um, I guess that's how I ended up being uh, being a gymnast. You know, he saw me and uh, thought that I would look like a gymnast and I'll be a great gymnast. And they asked me if I want to try gymnastics. And I said, yes. Do you remember this at all? Like, no. OK. I don't remember a lot of stuff uh, yeah. from uh, my youth, I don't remember, but everybody's talking about it. Uh, all one memory that I have from when I was little is learning my back walkover on beam with Marta. Okay. Uh, and I was like a six year old doing that on the on the beam. Okay. Were you? Did you know who they were at that point? Because you're so young. Had you seen? No. No. Okay. No. Um, I was six. You know, mm -hmm. five and a half, six year old. I just didn't follow gymnastics. Of course, everybody was talking about Nadia when she won the Olympics. Um, we knew who they were, like, mm -hmm. you know, gymnastics, but I was so little that I didn't understand exactly what they did. Mm -hmm. Now, was she tr still training in the gym in Deva at that time? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, we actually trained in the same gym. Um, once I started first grade, I moved to a different coach. Uh, so I was trained by Bella and Marta maybe like, you know, four or five months, that's about it. But we did uh, train in the same gym with Nadia, not in the same time, but it was just uh, cool to train in the same gym with uh, the National Training Center, you know, yeah. training team and all that stuff. So I guess you were there when they actually defected then, which has to be a very strange time when they're in the gym, then they're not there and I guess, was that communicated to you? Like, did you even know what happened or did they kind of shield? It, it wasn't communicated to us, but mm -hmm. everybody was talking. So we kind of like hear from coaches, mm -hmm. you know, they were talking to each other. So we like to just kind of like sneak and hear them talk. And okay. um, 
that's how we learn. But uh, okay. they try not to make a big deal, mm-hmm. and because it was still uh, a communist mm-hmm. country, we try not to, or they try not to talk anymore about mm-hmm. them. And that said, they left. Nobody can talk about them anymore. So okay, yeah, it's just super interesting to think about. You know, being a kid in that time. So I was saw on your Facebook that you posted a picture and you said that of your initial group, you went to the Olympics and someone else became an Olympic coach that was in that group? Yes, uh, Lily Cosma, Liliana Cosma was my uh, teammate since we were six. Okay. Uh, we started gymnastics together in first grade and uh, we went all the way to junior team together. <laughs> and then I was selected to the national team um, when I was 12. And um, she continued gymnastics, but she wasn't in the national team for that many years. But uh, she's been uh, coaching the national team, and uh, I think for about 10 years. Mm-hmm. So it's nice to go home and uh, see her and uh, just talk about our you know, years when we started gymnastics. And now uh, she's coaching the Olympic team, and then, or she was coaching the Olympic team, and then I was an Olympic gymnast. So. Yeah. Now, were, did the junior national team train in Deva at that time? Or how did, I guess, how did everyone else filter into Deva who would eventually move there for the national team? Well, we had few centers. At uh, that time in the 70s and 80s, we had few centers that had uh, like clubs. We mm-hmm. didn't have a lot of them, but the city clubs, that's where we trained um, until maybe we were like 10, 11. Mm-hmm. And then we had competitions, national competition for the clubs. And then the coaches, national team coaches were looking and the federation was looking at each gymnast. Mm-hmm. And then um, they invited you to train at the junior team was in Onesh, mm-hmm. where the national training center used to be. And uh, I went there for one year and train over there with uh, the national, uh, the junior team. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I was invited to the national team that is in Deva. So who was on the junior national team, I guess, when you moved over there? Well, I was, um, most of my 87 Mm -hmm. world team, I Mm -hmm. guess, Celestina Popa, Aurelia Dobre, Camelia Voina. Mm -hmm. So, uh, four or five of us, after the 84 Olympics, mm-hmm. we were transferred to DEVA to the national team. Okay. And how old were you when you started competing internationally? Because I was looking at some videos of you from 83 and thinking that you must be 11 and you're competing on TV. I, yeah. My first international competition was when I was 10. Okay. It was in Egypt. I don't think it was a big competition, but <laughs> it was international. Okay. <laughs> And were you freaked out or was it just normal for you at 10 years old? To... I think it, I can't say that it was normal, but I was just a kid. I was like, yeah, I'm going to Egypt. You know, I'm, I was looking for chocolate up probably because that's all I care about. Chocolate and cake. OK, but uh, it was it was just another competition. But it was fun to be able to travel mm-hmm. as a kid because Romania was they they had their borders closed so not many people got to travel during that time okay now you were the junior champion for two years in the early 80s i think i was reading on your bio um so i guess at what age did it start to become serious where you knew like you were expected to win if you went to a competition well, every competition you were kind of expected to win, if mm-hmm. it, even if it was like club competition, because mm-hmm. the coaches were like, you know, this is what we train. Um, and, and do, even I think now, maybe more like during my time, um, we didn't have a lot of, uh, actually we didn't have any recreational gymnastics or any sports. Mm-hmm. So if you started a sport, you started because you wanted to be the best, you want to be, mm-hmm. end up in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. So we were serious from the time we started gymnastics. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were serious about winning and, um, um, but I never, I don't know if I ever, like there was one point when I was like, that's it, you know, I'm the best. Mm-hmm. I don't think I ever thought about that. Were you a precocious kid who wanted to win like, even amongst your group early on? I guess I was very competitive. I don't remember that. I'm not right now. I'm not competitive, but okay. Um, I wanted, I guess I wanted to be the best and, uh, luckily it helped that I had the talent. So with hard work combined, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it made it a little bit easier when you have the talent too. 
So at some of the meets I was looking at in 83 and 84, when you were competing as a junior, Boginskaya was there, um, you know, many of Dagmar Kirsten, so many of the different gymnasts that you'd wind up competing as at the Olympics. So I guess at that time, did you realize, have any awareness how good they were or did you follow international competition? Yeah. We, um, we didn't follow any international competitions. I know the coaches did. Mm -hmm. But we were kind of sheltered. We, we weren't watching TV. There was there was actually no TV, no nothing in Romania. So um, even when we went to the competitions, we were just in the gym competing and then mm -hmm. leaving. We never sat and watched other uh, compete. Mm -hmm. So um, we're kind of like sheltered about like from watching other gymnasts compete, other mm -hmm. gymnasts train. So we didn't know if they were good, if they were not good, if anything. We just went in the competition and kind of focused on us. And the uh, coaches were really good about helping us stay focused and not watch everybody else. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you were in the gym when the 84 team would have gone to the Olympic Games. Did you watch those on TV? I know you said you didn't watch. OK. No, we didn't watch anything on TV. I, I don't think we had a TV at that time. Okay. <laughs> So how did you know what the Olympics were, I guess, as a young kid? Like, this is what... Yeah. It's just people talking. And, of mm -hmm. course, you know, coaches uh, during the 84 Olympics, I was in Onesht at the junior team. Mm -hmm. So um, I really don't remember watching on TV. So mm -hmm. maybe I'm wrong. But like I said, I don't remember a lot of stuff. Okay. I think I blocked it. I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> So when did you magically age two years? Like, how does this happen? And do you get them back now? Like, do you feel younger? I got them back. I'm younger now. Yes. <laughs> so how does this happen? Yeah. Well, um, after the 84 Olympics, mm -hmm. uh, we moved to the national team. There were four or five gymnasts that went from the junior team to the national team. And um, during that time, a lot of the girls from the Olympics, from 84 Olympics, a lot of the uh, gymnasts mm -hmm. retired. So when the new year of 85 started, I guess they didn't have a lot of seniors that were ready to compete. They were in shape. They were good enough to compete. Mm -hmm. So um, they looked at me and said, that's it. You're two years older and you're going to be ready to compete at Europeans. I said, okay. okay. <laughs> well, I didn't have a choice. I couldn't yeah. say yes or no. They just told me and I went for it, you know? Yeah, and hope no one asks. So, yeah, I guess. Well, they said, if you ask, you're 15 now. And I said, okay. Okay. I didn't, I didn't question their, you know, why. And uh, the coaches didn't question why. It wasn't, a, it wasn't something that the coaches came up with the idea it always came from federation from the communist party and all that stress about winning medals and i think they were trying to make sure that um the best gymnasts were competing so i know that nadia was a coach of the junior team for different years did you overlap with her as your coach or did that... no 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 right after i came i think it was after it was uh, she was a coach with uh, for like when uh, Kristina Bontaš, Milosevic went to the junior team. That's when she was coaching the junior team. OK, yeah. So do you so when you competed in 85 at the World Championships and the Europeans, do you were you intimidated or were you just like it's just fun? Like, I guess I think it was just fun because nobody really knew who I was. Mm -hmm. So there were there were expectation from coaches, but not really. I don't think anybody expected me to win anything or do that well. You know, mm -hmm. I think I was just there to help the team. Mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't that much expectation for me, and um, I didn't know what world championship was in my head. You know, it's like, oh, I'm going. It's another competition. Um, and I was just really a kid that loved gymnastics and. Mm -hmm you know, was ready to compete. Yeah. So you did win the balance beam there. You got a 10. Had yeah. you gotten a 10 before? Like, no, the... that was my first one. Ever? Like? Ever. <laughs> and did it feel perfect? Like, were you satisfied with your performance? Yeah. Yes. You know what? When you go like fast, you can be like, yes, I did it. And then you go in slow motion and you're like, oh, I've been 
my leg here. Oh, I did, you know, kind of <laughs> like when you go in slow motion, he's never perfect. Okay. <laughs> so you won there. And I guess, did you learn what the world championships were pretty quickly? I guess, is it pretty like incredible to see the other level of gymnastics around you? I mean, because obviously the competitors are stronger than you would see at home. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Just kind of like being in that huge arena. Mm -hmm. I guess I competed at the junior uh, Europeans the mm -hmm. year before. That was like kind of big arena and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So it wasn't my big competition, but just that arena that is you know, so many more gymnasts competing. But um, I don't know, I, maybe gymnasts these days mm -hmm. take more you know, watching everybody yeah. else, because as a kid, I just, I was a kid. And that's all I can think of with that. I well, today they all follow each other on Instagram. Everyone yes, knows what and everyone they know is doing. Each other. We, ne we were not, a, not allowed to talk to anybody, you know, any stranger, any gymnast. I didn't speak any English. So mm -hmm. we really never talked to anybody except our teammate. Okay. I mean, did you, I guess, were the coaches like fixated on the Russians at that time? Did you like watch them and see what they were doing? Uh. I think they were watching. I never watch. Okay. Uh, but they, I'm pretty sure they knew what was going on, trying to figure out, you know, their routines and everything. But yes, it was, you know, Eastern European countries. Uh, mm -hmm. It was always, and China, of course. Mm -hmm. But it was always, you know, the uh, East Germany, mm -hmm. Russia, Bulgaria at that time, mm -hmm. uh, that they were really good in China. But mainly, uh, you know, Russia was, you know, you know, you, the okay. Soviet okay. Union was the, you know, the rivals that we always competed against. Okay. So I think what's so interesting is I was looking at your results and you competed at every DTB cup, every uh, <laughs> an event in Tokyo, every event in like London. So, I mean, you won a lot of these events. Did you get prize money? Do you get to keep that prize money? Like, well, this... we did get prize money, but we didn't get to keep because uh, I guess Federation, everybody else took mm -hmm. our money. Uh, during the communist mm -hmm. uh, years, we were never allowed to keep any of the money. Mm -hmm. So even when we won, I know we won prizes, but they took the money away. Okay. Now, did you did you get chocolate when you go on international trips? Like, what are the perks like? Yeah. Well, you know, you have you get they give you some some money for mm -hmm. being there and all that. So yes, that was my favorite thing to buy was bubble gum and chocolate because we never had that in Romania. We never had bubble gum in Romania during the communists. So it was something that we can just bring home and show to everybody what we have. Okay. So you had a lot of signature skills. I wanted to know about how different things came about. So there, first of all, the Romanians yeah, and the- two. Well, you have the turn on floor. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And there's this like very unique style of dancing. And in one of the documentaries, they call it beat ballet. And you're all doing this kind of like jazz <laughs> dance. It's like very the interesting. Funniest, the funniest thing is I never understood what was that. I never knew. And my best friend, it kept saying, you know, it's like, oh, the beat ballet. And I was like, what is that? And it's like, oh, when you did the beat ballet, I'm like, I don't understand. What is that? <laughs> and then he had to show me the the yeah. dance. It was actually our warm up. So um, we tried to kind of like get like different warm ups, different, uh, just a little bit more fun because our every practice was kind of the same. Mm -hmm. So at least something that we can change was the warm up because that was about and that we can like kind of change a little bit. So that was our warm up with different style of dancing. Cause you all kind of had that style of dancing in your floor routines in 87 and 88, but then not after. It was after. the 80s. Yeah. It was the 80s, come on. You had the perm. I mean, it was fabulous. So. Yes, thank you. Uh, I loved it. Yes, so, okay. So this beat ballet you have going on, is that how you learn how to do these turns on the floor? Cause it's all very stylized movement, yeah. I don't know how I came to do the turn on the on your knee, on my knee, on everybody's knee. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, I think, like the choreographer mm -hmm. was trying to help us, you know, mm -hmm. help help us work on it, and he would put like some kind of music, you know, floor music, and he would be like, "You have twenty minutes to come up with a routine." 
Okay. So everybody had to come up with a routine. So that's how I ended up, I guess, with uh, that spin on uh, on my knee because we're like trying to just play around in the gym a lot and, uh, you know, okay. somehow I went down on my knees and I turned and stood up. Okay. <laughs> Now, there's also a video of you and Aurelia doing a, I guess it's like your warm up, but you're doing it as like an exhibition at an event. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yes, because we never kind of came prepared and they're like, oh, can you please do a dance? And we didn't have a dance, of course. So we just knew that kind of warm up. So okay. we tried to put it together really <laughs> fast to show them something, you know, some kind of dance. Okay. Um, so how did you start doing back-to-back -back tumbling? Obviously, Oksana Omilianchek had also done this. You two were kind of the pioneers. Well, she was, she was the first one to do it at Europeans, I think, in 85 and Worlds. Okay. So from there on, everybody, that was that was the style, and everybody wanted to do that. So, of course, we kind of copied her, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the next year, everybody was doing it. How hard is that? Like, do you want to die midway through, or is it just more complicated that you don't like misstep or something? It's um, hmm. it's definitely you need more stamina. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you need you know more power mm -hmm. to go into the, you know more tumbling passes. Kind of like this, you you know, mm -hmm. this time you need to do more tumbling pass passes than three. Uh, if you want to win, but um, it wasn't very hard because it was just a double full. So when you can do a triple full, double full is really easy to punch front and go for the uh, go for the next double full. So, but you definitely need to practice more routines so you can. Uh, it makes it easier. Did you have a favorite routine. skill on floor? Because you did do a triple full. You did double double. I think I, uh, I like the triple full. Okay. I think that was my favorite skill, if I had one. <laughs> I, I'm starting to think about it if I had one, but uh, I like competing triple full. Okay, yeah. So you did, do, you're the first person to do the double double on floor, which today, now everyone does, and I know the floor is very different, so it was very different yes. at the time. So how did you, you know, decide to do it, start working on it? You know, what was that progression like? Well, um, I was, you know, my tumbling were like always full in, full, mm -hmm. you know, full in pike. And um, we were playing on the trampoline, um, really not training a lot on the trampoline, even though we had a trampoline, we didn't train that much. Mm -hmm. We were just playing and uh, just playing or like trying to twist more and everything. So the coach Octavian Bellu mm -hmm. was trying not just with me, but with more gymnasts to to do the skill and I guess, you know, it was easier for me or I got it better that he was ready to compete. Okay. So what did he coach then? Cause like, I guess what was the coaching situation like in the eighties? Cause I know he was, he's, was he the floor coach or what was his? He was the floor coach. Uh, Adrian Goriak was the main coach and he coached Volt. Okay. And uh, Maria Cosma coached Beam. And I guess in my opinion was the best coach ever on Beam. Okay. Uh, and Adrian Stan coached Bart. Adrian Stan is the British coach who's yes yes a and he's brilliant I'm like his mind is working like never I've never seen anybody else working like the way you know putting everything together mm -hmm. technique wise everything you know it's just it was always good about that so and, you, and he showed that he did that for you know Great Britain yeah so that your team was very good on bars and then romania was never good on bars again so can you get to the bottom of this well i think we were good because of adrian stan uh okay. adrian stan was the coach for men's gymnastics okay so and they brought him to deva to train us because he knew technique and everything and helped and he showed um and I think the gymnasts in the 90s were good too. Steliana Nistor, the late 90s, 2000. They were, they were really good. I think the problem was that when the bars got wider, mm -hmm. it wasn't just, you know, strength. It was technique. Okay. And uh, starts from, you know, six-year-olds to learn that technique. And they didn't put that you know, base into it and um, it showed later. Because you have a lot of I natural think... swing on bars, even doing the stalders and everything like that. But I 
think that was natural. It wasn't really taught that okay. much, you know, and um, I think it was just natural. And if you didn't spend a lot of time on that, uh, it just shows later in life, in your gymnastic life, that you don't have it. Okay. So what? talk us through the vault. You said that you had three good events in vault. So everyone has something. So what was the problem with vault? Yeah. Well, I think my problem was that I didn't know how to run. I was not powerful gymnast and that helps if you want to do a good vault. So, okay. <laughs> and I was always scared. I guess I was like so small that it doesn't matter if I had like strength, I didn't have the power to vault over that horse and flip around and land correctly. So do you think it would be uh, different on the new, on the table? Would you feel more comfortable? Or? Of course, you know, like when we started doing your chenkos on that horse, it was just, I, I don't think there is a gymnast that wasn't scared of that. Uh, that was our kind of nightmare of gymnastics, trying to, you know, make sure that we always put our hands on that, you know, yeah. on top of the horse. And uh, Had you ever missed it? or? Yes, I did. And I think that's what, you know, everybody does. And um, I was at the... 86 World Cup in China mm -hmm. during practice, uh, I missed the course and I landed on my head. Okay. But I guess I was good. I was I was hurt, but uh, I still competed and mm -hmm. I was okay after that. But that's the scary part. And I think it makes it easier right now to, you know, the table and they made the right decision to change. So make it uh, safer for the gymnast. Now, did you ever try like front entry vaults to do something like that? Or did everyone have to do your chenkos to be kind of efficient? Well, we did because I was competing front handspring, front tack. Okay. So we did uh, Tsukahara's and mm -hmm. all that. But then after 85, 84 or 85, 85. When he started doing your chenkos, everybody was doing your chenkos. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I think my last year in 89, um for event finals we had to do two different vaults mm -hmm. so i competed front handspring front tack with half okay at worlds yeah did you like that better the front handspring frag tent half or um yes definitely safer okay okay so um also you had the beam mount which is which dominic mociano did a variation of for years yeah. so they would mention you on tv all the time so I guess, how did this come about? Um, that I know for sure we were just playing in the gym. Okay. Um, it, it's it's kind of funny for us because there was kind of, whenever we had some time off mm -hmm. or, you know, free time, we were always in the gym playing. Okay. And um, we were just on the beam trying to figure out how to get on the beam, mm -hmm. get out of the beam stay on the beam. So that's how we ended up just playing around. And the coach liked it. He's like, yeah, I think we, if we do this and this and this and turn, it will be a great mount. So that's how we ended up uh, competing. And um, I think before that, um, I was doing from my knee, I was going uh, into the, but it wasn't a mount. It was up on the, on the beam. I was doing the kind of the same skill and Aurelia was doing. So both of us were competing mm -hmm. that kind of skill, but on the beam, not just as a mount. Okay. Did you train a lot of skills or practice, play around with things that you didn't wind up competing? Or? Oh, yes. Yes. I um, remember doing handspring, handspring full on beam. I never mm -hmm. competed. Uh, we always train full in dismounts, but we never competed because we didn't stick the dismount 10 out of 10. So during our time, you had to stick the dismount to get a 10. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you always easier to do a double tuck mm -hmm. and uh, stick that landing. Um, on floor, we, we tried every skill kind of, you know, double A. I never competed double A, but I worked a little bit on it, but I guess it wasn't a good skill for me to compete and coaches didn't put that in my routine. So I guess what was Adrian Goriak and Marina Kosma like as coaches? Because your team had a very, I think, a little bit of a different style than the Romanians in the 90s. They were both good, just different. You know, like what, mm -hmm. um, yeah. With, well, I guess, what was her style like on beam? Well, beam, she was a 
strict coach, but she was a great coach. Mm-hmm. Um, we did train a lot, and I think it showed in competition. Um, we remember most practices we had to stick 10 routines. We had to do 10 perfect routines. Okay. So no wobbles, no steps at landing. That was our assignment to stick 10 routines and to... And it was like morning we did uh, compulsory and afternoon we did um, optionals. But that's all we remember, doing seven to ten routines every practice. And it shows in competition that when you look, uh, especially in 87, when you look at each one of my teammates when we're on beam, we look like, I don't know, uh, we didn't look nervous. We didn't look like we were worried that we're going to fall we were just like ready to compete. Mm-hmm. And I guess, where did Goriak go after 88? I know he, did he leave the Ro- Romania or? No, 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 no. He was there, he was there, he was there until 90, until 1990, okay. when um, kind of like after the revolution, mm-hmm. um, they sent everybody back home mm-hmm. because they said it was a communist, you know, style to be, all together at the National Training Center. So we were all at home, gymnasts, coaches, and everybody. So when they decided to bring everybody back, um, he didn't want to come back. Okay. And then he moved to France. We're actually good friends. And then he moved to France uh, a few months later, and that's where he is right now. And where is Marina Kosma? Uh... Um, she actually defected. Uh, she's in Germany. When we went uh, after the Olympics, when we went to the DTB mm-hmm. uh, competition, um, right after the competition, before we had to go home, um, she just decided to stay there. Okay. And that's how Mariana Bitang then became a beam coach? or um, It was somebody else. Uh, Tatiana Popa was the coach for 89. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she was after that. Once I retired, I didn't keep up with and touch yeah. with her. Uh, the coaches and the gymnasts that they were at the team. But then I think 1991, Mariana Bitang and Bello became uh, national team coaches. So your team in 87, as you said, looked very confident. If you can watch from the compulsories, it was clear that team was going to (laughs) win. And the Soviets did not look as confident. I guess, had it been the national mission to win? I mean, did you know that your team was good enough, I guess, going in? How did that... Well, I think it started with uh, the Europeans in Mm -hmm. uh, Moscow that Mm -hmm. it showed that we were ready. Mm -hmm. And um, we had four gymnasts over there at the Europeans that we were just like ready to compete. And we showed the Russians that we were right up there with them, Mm -hmm. if not better. You know, so I'm thinking that after Europeans, they kind of realized that you know, we're going into worlds ready to win. And uh, I don't know, it was just a different to, I feel like that that team, we were like together, we were, all of us contributed to the gold medal. You know, everybody was good. Everybody uh, worked together. Everybody competed well. And uh, it was kind of like our best year. Mm -hmm. So, Europeans, you won the Europeans. Now you had gone from winning beam to being second at the World Cup in 86 and then winning Europeans in 87. So a steady progression, I guess, had you, were you paying more attention, like knowing, you know, the pressure was on you, I guess, at that point to win? I think it was right after Europeans Mm -hmm. because we never, we kind of knew we were like, we're good, but mm-hmm. didn't think that we can go to Europeans and win. Mm-hmm. There was no way that you can go all the way there and win. Mm-hmm. So right after Europeans were like, I think in my opinion, you know, my opinion, I was like, okay, uh, you know, now everybody's going to watch us. Mm-hmm. When we go into the world championships, everybody's going to look at me. Everybody's going to expect me to win. Mm -hmm. And I guess it shows that I couldn't take the pressure. And I wouldn't say that because you had the one of the greatest compulsory rounds of all time during uh, the first day of competition. You got a thirty nine nine five. Right. 
you had a pretty good day. I guess you liked compulsories a lot. I, do you remember, you know, competing there in compulsories at Worlds? Or? Yes, I remember shaking on beam. Even though it was like easy skills, it was just hard. I don't know. Um, I was always nervous on beam, so it doesn't. If you're not nervous, I don't know. Maybe you're a robot. Okay. Um, but I don't. I never remember the scores. I never remember. So when you said like I was, uh, I had the best composer. I was like, oh, okay. You should go rewatch it. It was really good. You had a really yeah, good I day. Watch it. Yes, <laughs> you feel very good. Now, were you the type of person, whenever I've competed, if I'm going to do well, the nerves come on. I, usually I get tired. Why am I doing this? I hate this. Like, do you go through, did you go through all of those emotions before competition? No, no, no. I never, as a gymnast, I never, uh, rem I don't remember thinking about, oh, you know, I don't like it. It's too much pressure. Mm -hmm. I never think about that. Um, I know it was pressure because everybody was ex was expecting us to do well, mm -hmm. but I guess knowing that we train so well, mm -hmm. that helped us kind of go in into the competition and be ready to compete and do well, mm -hmm. even though we were nervous. And I remember just like before competing on beam, we're like, uh, please, God, let me stay on the beam. <laughs> <laughs> I need to stay on the beam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, you did trip on a leap in the optionals. You know, you kind of missed yes. your foot. <laughs> I didn't fall on a handspring lay-lay or anything, yeah. you know, <laughs> that I can say at least I was doing a, you know, a harder skill. But... Yes. <laughs> but things happen. But your team had one of the best floor rotations of all time, 10 after 10, I think three tens in a row. Yes. Um, so the feeling when you do win as a team, like, how does that compare to individual? Like, is it? It's way better. Okay. Um, it, you know, you can like win an individual medal, but when it's like the whole team winning and knowing mm -hmm. that all of us are the best in the world, mm -hmm. I think, and knowing how much we worked as a team and, you know, cheer for each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that just is so special to and we never won before. So mm -hmm. that, you know, for us, it was the only time that we won as a team. And that made us so special to be out there on the podium with mm -hmm. all my teammates. Yeah. No, I guess Aurelia wound up winning the all around. Um, now, were you two like very neck and neck in the gym every day at that point in time? Because you were kind of, I guess, the star of the team before the company. Yeah, she had, I was trying, oh, I don't know oh. what happened. Yeah, we're still here. Good. We're yeah. still okay. Um, well, I was I was competing with Aurelia and training. We were in the same uh, group mm -hmm. um, training since we were ten. Okay. So we're kind of like best friends. And um, even though I hated that I lost, mm -hmm. I was happy for her that she won. Uh, but yes, uh, I was trying to remember when uh, Aurelia had her knee. It was before... Before 88, right? No, it was 87 too. 88 was the second one. Okay. She she hurt her knee twice. Mm -hmm. So it was before 87, she hurt her knee and 87 was really, really good. And then 88, she hurt it twice, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the second time. Okay. But yeah, we were training together. We were always mm -hmm. in the same group. Uh, we're like always like group of three or four gymnasts on each event mm -hmm. uh, training. So we were always together and mm -hmm. we kind of knew that three or four gymnasts from the team will be ready to compete all mm -hmm. around and be ready to win. So tell me about the gymnasts on the 87 team. Cause it was kind of a dream team of sorts. You had Aurelia. You had a Katarina Zabo, who was from the 84 Olympics, who... Yeah, she was, she was the last one from 84 Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, Camelia Voynia, mm -hmm. Celestina Popa, mm -hmm. which uh, all of us kind of like made it... I don't know. It was It's weird, because looking back, we're like, we trained the same. We, you know, it's mm -hmm. not like we did something different that year that we mm -hmm. had that good of a team. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess... Voynia was doing the double layout punch front on floor. Mm -hmm. 
You had the first double on vault from, or one of the first doubles on vault. Eugenia Golia. Yeah. So. She, I'm like, I wish I can vault like her, but no. <laughs> well, I have to say that looking at the video, your vaults in 87 were the best of your career at that meeting. I think so, yes. I think the, I, I, I look back and I think 87 was my best year. It doesn't matter. Or like, it was, everything seemed like it was easier. Mm -hmm. I was uh, in great shape. I was ready to compete. I don't know. But that's 87 was always like looking back is the best year of my gymnastic, my gymnastic career. So after you have a big win like that in 87, obviously the Communist Party is going to want you to repeat that the next of year. Course. They always want that. <laughs> so do you feel that kind of pressure before the Olympics? Is it a lot to deal with? Yeah, it was it was a lot to deal with. Um, Luckily, I was just, I was a kid that I, I would go with it, you know, I'll mm -hmm. be like, okay, I'll try to win. I will, you know, mm -hmm. it didn't bother me that much. And, um, but it was the pressure because everybody expected me to win. Everybody expected the team to win. Everybody was looking at us and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to find everything that didn't work well, you know, kind of like that. So mm -hmm. uh, we went to the Olympics with a little bit more pressure because 87 was such a good year for us. Now, did you feel that the team could win in 88 when you went no. there? Okay. No. What happened? No, we knew, well, um, not just, I think it's like each one of us in the team, mm -hmm. uh, having Aurelia not be ready. She had three months to train before the Olympics okay. with her knee. Uh, but we needed her for the name, for, you know, for the experience. And um, I think in our, deep down in our hearts, we knew mm -hmm. that we're not going to, we're not, it would mm -hmm. be very hard to win. Okay. Now, how come Zabo didn't continue one more year to go to a second Olympics? I don't know. I think... In, I think she was done right after 87, after the world championships, when we won, she's like, that's it, you know, okay. I've accomplished everything that I needed to accomplish. Okay. Um, there's no need for me to go to another Olympics. She okay. didn't feel like it was for her. Uh, once we went, you know, and that's it. And just kind of like Simone, that's another year that you have to be in the gym. We were in the gym almost 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So uh, that takes a lot when you're 19, 20 to keep going with the same program. Now, you all had this like short haircut going on in 88. So someone told me that when you change your hair, it's because you need a psychological change. So like what was going on? <laughs> yeah. Now, all of us got a haircut after 87 walls. So okay. before Christmas, we all cut our hair and I can't tell you why we just decided. So it wasn't like, oh, we mm -hmm. should. But I guess we decided, yeah, let's do it. OK. Um, and um, I just had shorter hair, eight, all 88. OK. And um, before we left for the Olympics, mm -hmm. um, my hair was like this, like short, but straight. OK. And uh, we stopped in Bucharest for a few days to get together with all the athletes and uh, be ready to leave for Seoul. And uh, somebody in the Federation didn't like my hair, so they decided to give me a perm. And uh, I didn't have a choice. Okay. Because um, <laughs> you didn't say yes or no. You were just doing what you were told. And I said, okay. No, you had a picture a that you that you labeled Bucharest. <laughs> you had a picture you labeled Bucharest bangs. So what are Bucharest bangs? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's just me telling stories, uh, okay. telling my best friend stories about gymnastics, and um, I was telling him um, that on the way to Europeans mm -hmm. in '87. We took the train from Deva to Bucharest. We always took the train to Bucharest to fly out, out mm -hmm. of Bucharest. And I was kind of bored and I cut my bangs with those little scissors. So okay. when you see an 87 pictures, my bangs are like kind of short. So that's why it became Bucharest bangs because I was telling <laughs> my best friend the stories of me cutting my bangs um, in the train. So, yeah. <laughs> so on the this... way to Bucharest. <laughs> 
Now, you said that 87 was your best year. You thought the best shape, but you did win three gold medals at the Olympics. So I would think that you were in pretty good shape if you won six medals overall. So I guess, why did you feel different about 87 versus 88? Uh, maybe it's not just because I was in good shape. It was just easier for me. Okay. I think um, starting of 86, I started to grow a little bit, kind of hitting puberty, and that's what made it a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I started to have some pain. My back was hurting. My knee was hurting. Not major, but mm-hmm. uh, I don't remember 80, uh, 87 having, mm-hmm. you know, a hard time. It was just easier to train mm-hmm. uh, the gym. So. This was supposed to be an Olympic year, but I guess, what do you remember about competing in the Olympics? Like, do you remember it vividly? Is it like nightmares, good memories? Yeah. Um, I don't remember a lot. Okay. I remember being in the gym and competing and then crying because I didn't win gold. <laughs> so how bad did you want to win? Because a lot of people think you deserve to win. And it's one of the eternal debates. Well, everybody among... wants to win, you know, yes. and um, I guess... Because everybody was saying, are you good enough? You should win. You should win. Um, When I got second place, I didn't get to enjoy that. You know, looking back now, I'm like, man, I was second. I I won a medal in the Olympics, you know. Instead of that, I was just so down on myself and thinking that I failed and Mm -hmm. I was a bad gymnast because I didn't win the gold. Mm -hmm. I think that's sad. Yeah. I mean, did you like what if afterwards? Like, did you, if you had done something well, better? Everybody, everybody was saying that it was the vault. No, it wasn't mm-hmm. the vault. I could never do a better vault than that, what I did, you know. Okay. I think uh, looking back, I think it was the mistake of uh, me doing the double double on floor mm-hmm. um, in team finals. Mm-hmm. I didn't train that well. The floor was very, very hard. We didn't like that uh, equipment. And um, I, uh, Octavian Bell wasn't there. Mm-hmm. He was the only one who was spotting me on that scale. So the whole week that I trained over there before the competition, I think I did two double double on the floor uh, on the podium training, and I kind of like I was running out of the floor because it was too hard. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that was our mistake of doing it during team final. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, during team final, instead of waiting for event finals. Okay. And that way, if you make a mistake, you make a mistake, you lose floor, you know. Now, why did you do it in the team final? Did you did they want it named after you or was it just a... I don't know. I don't know. I, and I never asked the coaches. Maybe that's one good thing, one thing that I need to uh, <laughs> ask my coaches why they decided for me to do it in team final and not wait until the event finals had you done it at competitions before that or uh, no that was the only i think i competed at like romanian nationals but i never like a big competition i never competed so i was competing at the romanian nationals get Mm -hmm. you know right before the olympics but okay and then obviously I mean, obviously you're very upset. You, you lose the gold. You, I lose the gold. You cry for I don't know how long. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You had a pretty good day in event finals coming back. So apparently you're very resilient and you had quite a good day in event finals. Do you remember that well? You know, do you, did it ease the, I guess, uh, sadness of the Olympics for you? I guess, you know, because you always go into the Olympics if you're good enough, you know, that you want to go you know, win a gold and um, to be like silver with the team and then silver around. And, uh, you know, and you, you won a medal on vault, right? Like you won a medal. I, met, I know. I was like, yes, I got a medal. Why? I think they felt sorry for me. Okay. And they just gave me a medal. Here, your vault is not that bad. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I guess everybody made a mistake. That's why. That's why mm-hmm. I won a medal on the yeah. vault because I wasn't good enough, and um, that was a surprise mm-hmm. medal for me. Okay, but you did win bars, beam, and floor, so it was. I know that's a big surprise. I never thought that I would go into event finals and win everything. Mm-hmm. Um, bars, so I guess, was the easiest to win because I already had like ten, ten, ten. Mm-hmm. So combine will have been easier for me to win, but um, I don't know about beam and floor. Well, I guess Shishinova made a mistake on floor. No, you were good on floor. 
Yeah. I didn't have to do the double double, so I yeah. stuck my full in. Yeah. Why didn't you do the double? I guess because you made a mistake. They didn't have you do the double double for the event. Exactly. Project. Okay. Well, you know, uh, I guess I was wondering where you know you and Elena Shushanova had such a close competition. You know, it's such a defining moment of your life, but you're so young. I guess when is the last time you even saw her? You know, did you ever see her again after? No, I think the Olympics was the last year that I saw her. Okay. Or the last time I saw her, and we never spoke to each other, uh, unless it was congratulation. Mm -hmm. We were on the podium. We never talked to each other. But uh, again, you know, I didn't speak any English. Uh, I only spoke Romanian. Mm -hmm. We weren't allowed to speak with anybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, we always travel with the security people behind us and mm -hmm. they were watching our every move. And so. they probably had their own security people too. Yeah. That's... Yes, probably. <laughs> you know, it was like, yeah. you know, 10 gymnasts or seven gymnasts, three coaches and 20 other people to watch us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess you competed a lot in 88. Did you keep competing immediately after? Because one thing about, interesting about the Olympics being in 2021 is that the FIG has no plans to cancel the world championships. So the gymnasts oh, really? who competed at the Olympics in July could then go to the world championships in October. That's a lot. Yeah. Now they do it in figure skating. They have it like six weeks, roughly five, oh, six really? weeks. But they've always yeah. done it that way. But I think for gymnasts, it's... I it's a lot hard. because yeah. you usually you peak at one competition. That's your mm -hmm. goal, to peak at one big competition, the major yeah. competition. So for you to peak at the Olympics and then mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Just try to peak again at Worlds? Or yeah. does it... I guess if you have a bad Olympics, then you go to World Championships. Yeah, like you if have you, your event you finals. Olympics, then you die. Yeah, you would have won the post-Olympic Worlds, no problem. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, we finished with the uh, competition in the Olympics and uh, three days later, we're in the gym, so. Okay. The gym in Romania or the gym just in Korea? Uh, we stayed another week in Seoul to let the other athletes uh, mm -hmm. finish their competition. Uh, so we were in the gym over there doing conditioning and basic skills and uh, we didn't stop training. We just okay. went back in the gym. Now you competed, I guess it was after, but you went to like Chinichi Cup and a lot of other mm -hmm. competitions. Were you exhausted after the Olympics or it was just... Yes, I was. And I remember I didn't want to train that well. So I don't know if it shows a Chinichi Cup and DTB <laughs> and... Um, but everybody, it wasn't just me. Everybody went back mm -hmm. uh, to Romania after the Olympics. We had three days to go home and visit our families. And then we went back in the gym and we trained like... Uh, Olympics is over, girls. You won, so what? You know, now okay. it's time to train again. Now, did you want to keep continue competing in gymnastics, or did you? Didn't think, okay. Yes, yes. I never. I don't think I remember just kind of like wanting to quit right after the Olympics. I wanted to continue, and uh, um, it was never in my head to mm -hmm. quit. Okay. So, continuing on to 1989, you know, you learn new compulsories. It's a new. I guess, era of sorts, was it uh, much harder than in 89? Did you start to feel old or how does that? Yes, change? I definitely felt old. I couldn't keep up with the younger gymnast. Uh, it was harder and harder for me to... Uh, that Christina I... Bontas, she was so small and I energetic. Know. she's and... still small. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you know, you got the juniors coming uh, after the Olympics. You always like bring four or five juniors into the national team. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of had to keep up with them. And I, mm -hmm. it was so much harder for me to, you know, finish my assignments to do those 10 routines every morning and every afternoon. And I think that was the part of what, you know, I kind of like, I think this will be my last year. I don't know if I want to compete. That's when I started to think about retiring. And I guess my body and my mind couldn't keep up with that. Okay. So did you, it was, do you, the 89 Worlds, did you go in feeling like it was your last big competition or did you? Not really. Um, I don't think I was, I think in my mind I wanted to continue. <laughs> so, um, but I, I, I never, I didn't go into world championships knowing that it was my last competition. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't that. I was. I definitely can see that I was tired. I wasn't enjoying. I was enjoying gymnastic, but not as much as the years before. Mm-hmm. And probably it was because we didn't. We still like training forty hours a week, doing mm-hmm. the same thing that. I was doing when I was 12. So mm-hmm. by the time I was like 17, I was like, I'm done. I can't, I can't continue like this. Yeah. But I really didn't want to. I wanted to kind of keep going. But. Mm-hmm. Now, when you learn the new compulsories after doing the same routines for four years, is it like <laughs> the sun comes out and you're like, finally, I don't have to do those darn routines anymore? Yes, but then you get the skills that you're like, who came up with this skill to do it, you know? Okay. Uh, so what skills did you hate the most in compulsories? Let's... Well, it was the cowl back handspring on the beam. Okay. Um, I think floor wasn't bad, vault... Bars was, I don't remember, where was that free hip thing that you mm-hmm. catch the bar? Okay. It was the sh- it was the shot push. It's like a f- undershoot, ha- like what you kind of. Oh, no, no, it was a free hip with half. a turn. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I need to go back and look at the compulsories. Yeah, you did well in them, so. Now, did finishing so... second at Europeans, like, did that change things for you? Do you start to feel like you're slipping or do you feel like... No, I think that was not just that year. I think it was a lot of politics involved Mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of competitions, especially during that time. I don't know now, but uh, during that time, it was always, you know, because I remember after the all around, we had the press conference and then my coach, Goreak, wanted to say something about, you know, in 88 or 89 oh 89 Europeans. okay yeah he wanted to at the press conference wanted to say something and the federation told him he's like no you cannot say anything uh don't you know mention anything just say that you you know happy with the results are you good and so it was always the politics i remember they said that i got a 9987 on floor because i didn't start from a 10 or something, my turn wasn't all the way, or something like that. That's what they were talking about. So, uh, I don't know, you know, I was disappointed. Again, second. Am I known for the second place? Uh, Well, you did win the Europeans, and you have, did it bother you? Does it really bother you that much that you didn't win, I guess, the world? You have a lot of medals, you know? like. No, at that time it did. You no, know, there are people, because I've met a lot of people. Everybody talking about, and everybody's talking about how you lost the gold. So in your mm-hmm. mind, you think that you lost. And I guess, you know, you're bad and you're bad at gymnastics, that you're not good enough because you lost gold. But that's, you know, years later, you don't think about that anymore. Mm-hmm. Now, you then again won three gold medals in the event finals, which is becoming a little bit of a trend here. So... <laughs> You lose all around, I'll give you bars, beam, and floor. Yes. <laughs> Just like Zabo, too, but she didn't win bars. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. So now watching those tapes, they said that you had something stuck under your, you had carpet stuck under your knee that was causing some sort of injury. You no, know, I got the, I, I had problems with my meniscus. Okay. So I had problems with my knee. And um, it was always like hurting, and I couldn't bend it all the way. So when I bend my knee, it was kind of like, it, I think a piece of the cartilage was loose okay. and it got stuck. So I couldn't straight my leg. And uh, I remember the coaches thought that was like drama because I didn't want to train. And that's okay. why they thought that my knee, because once it was back in place, I was fine. And I was, you know, competing and training, but I definitely mm-hmm. had problem with my knee. So I was in drama all the oh. time. Okay. <laughs> now you were always so sassy in your compete, like an energetic and effervescent in like 87, 88. And you look very serious in 89 when you're competing. Had things kind of changed for you or? I, I think that's what it shows that I didn't enjoy that much anymore. Okay. I think that's what changed uh, into my, um, I, like, even like training and competing, I didn't show that enjoyment of mm-hmm. being in the gym all the time and competing. Okay. But maybe that's why I look serious. Mm. So now you could, your bio says that you ended around the time of the Romanian revolution. Do you remember, I guess, you know, decision to stop training? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> my goodness. Yes, uh, we were sent home. Mm -hmm. I cannot talk anymore. Oh. My retirement was so... <laughs> um, I, they sent all the gymnasts home to their clubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, with my knee problem, I couldn't train a lot. I ended up going to Paris and had knee surgery mm -hmm. uh, during the Paris-Bercy competition. Okay. The French Federation invited me to Paris, watch the competition, and then I had knee surgery over there. And um, after that, we didn't have, and I don't know if they have it now, but we didn't have a good system in trying to get gymnasts back from injuries to get back in the gym. So they kind of knew that they have the younger generation that will win more medals than me. Mm -hmm. So they're like, okay, you're done. You know, we don't need you anymore. Kind of, you're not going to win more medals for us. So uh, decided to just, okay, I'm done. It wasn't, I don't know, because so many gymnasts come back from from mm -hmm. uh, injuries, but um, I didn't have like a good support from coaches from the Federation to come back, to let's get you ready, do rehab and all that stuff. So. Now you did professional events in the US, you know, there are videos of you, I guess from 91. How did you wind up coming to America? Um, I. After I had knee surgeries in 1990, I didn't do any more gymnastics. Uh, okay. I went to college and just was done. And uh, somebody that worked a little bit with the Federation, he was from Holland, mm -hmm. that helped us and sponsored us during the 88. Mm -hmm. um, I guess said, hey, there is a competition. If you and Aurelia wants to go, I'll help you. So we're like, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though we didn't do any training for a year, okay. we had a few months to kind of like, okay, let's just get back in kind of shape, gymnastic shape, and uh, compete whatever we can. Did you finish second again? Do you know? <laughs> I don't know. I think I finished like fourth. I did only beam and floor. Okay. And uh, I think I finished like fourth or I don't know. Okay. We weren't we weren't gymnasts at that time. Okay. <laughs> So I guess, how did you start coaching in the U.S.? How did you move here? And Well, I met a um, Romanian family that I knew lived in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and they had a gym uh, here. And I, I knew for sure that I didn't want to stay in Romania mm -hmm. because there were not that many opportunities at that time over there. It was either, and actually, I don't think I had a, coaching job in Romania. So many coaches, so many former gymnasts at that time, they couldn't coach in Romania because they didn't have enough clubs and enough um, position for coaching over there. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of my 87 team, uh, a lot of the gymnasts from 70s and 80s are not in, in Romania uh, anymore because there were no opportunities over there. Mm -hmm. So... Um, my dream was to move to France. Mm -hmm. uh, my coach, Goreac, was in France. I went there to see if I'm going to finish the university over there and uh, move. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came here. I came to Atlanta to visit um, and decided to stay. Did Suzanne <laughs> so Yachlin did try to get you to compete know, for her team uh, in Georgia? Hmm? If you lived in Georgia, did Suzanne Yachlin try to get you to compete for her university? Well, um, they got in touch with me and they were wondering if I want to go and train and see if I want to compete. But at that time, I didn't know English. I didn't like gymnastics that much anymore. Uh, so I said, no, I, I couldn't. Because she would try. I knew she had to have tried. Yes. So, yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. And I guess it seems like on your Facebook that you're you see a lot of your former teammates. So how does that... At different events and camps throughout the years? I mean, it looks like you're well, like... We, try to, we always try to stay in touch. Uh, mm -hmm. Those were like my family. We lived in the dormitories. We did everything for mm -hmm. six years. I lived with them. Okay. You know, whatever we did, we did it together. Gymnastics, playing, 
that was my family. I mm-hmm. didn't get a chance to visit my family except, you know, a few times a year. So the coaches and my teammates, those were my families. Um, and we always try to keep in touch. We always try to visit each other. I know it's hard, you know, we all have our own families, but whenever we get a chance, when I go home, I try to visit even younger generation. I try to keep in touch with them and visit. And, um, I don't know. Yeah, camps, competition, especially, you know, going to Worlds and seeing uh, former teammates, former gymnasts. Uh, it's always fun to do that. And it looks like you're very friendly with Svetlana Boginskaya, which yes, is fun. Which is fun. And everybody's yeah. like, oh, you, are you real friends? You hated each other. I'm like, no, we didn't hate each other. We didn't know each other. Yeah. Uh, but yes, um, we became really good friends. I think she's an awesome lady. And uh we always try to see each other a few times a year and spend time together and just kind of, it's fun to talk about our own experience in gymnastics and kind of see that is similar and uh, same for her. You know, it's like, I didn't talk to anybody. We, at that time, nobody talked to anybody mm-hmm. uh, during competition. So my friend, you said that you keep tabs on the younger gymnasts. So I have a friend, Ioana Jadik, who is Romanian. She was a gymnast, became a figure skater here as an adult. She wanted to know, do you keep tabs on Sabrina Voynia, uh, the daughter of no, one of I your don't. teammates? She said is like elite potential in Romania. She says for... Well, I see some of the... If somebody posts on Facebook, mm-hmm. I see some uh, videos, but I really don't keep in touch mm-hmm. with elite gymnastics okay uh believe it or not right after i retired i came to atlanta Mm -hmm. and i started coaching recreation gymnastics Mm -hmm. preschool gymnastics and i really loved it i never wanted to be an elite coach i never wanted to have anything else Mm -hmm. with elite world so i never watch gymnastics on tv Mm -hmm. um I don't, I kind of know who won like 96 Olympics or, but mm-hmm. never watched the gymnastics, never mm-hmm. watched their gymnastics. So I'm not big into following. Yeah. Following. No, do you ever watch your old stuff? Cause NBC is going to show all of the old Olympics since everyone is in the house. I oh, guess really? the, the Olympic channel is going to show all of the old. Oh, nice. Yeah. Maybe I'll watch it. I don't. I didn't go to any competition. I didn't watch any competition. Uh, and that's what's funny. I started going to um, World Championships uh, in Montreal in 2017. Mm-hmm. And uh, Europeans, just because my best friend loves gymnastics. And he was like, oh, it will we'll be fun to go together. And I was like, I've never been to a competition unless I was competing. So it was fun to just actually go. And I was like, oh, I think I like it. You know, I, I enjoy this watching gymnastics, but I never watch it on TV. I, mm-hmm. I never followed, you know, any of the gymnasts. Okay. I'll go and I'm like, who's that girl? And my best friend will be like, uh, she won the Olympics or she, you know, <laughs> or I was like, wow, okay, yes. You know? <laughs> so now your daughter, will she compete in collegiately likely or? Well, um, she tried the um, Hopes Championships like when she was 12 mm-hmm. to see if she wants to do some kind of elite gymnastics and she didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, right now she's 14 and she has four more years to kind of decide. Mm-hmm. But I think that's starting to be her goal if she keeps up four more years with gymnastics to kind of compete for a college and uh, um, it's starting in her, in, you know, in her mind to be that goal because for, for so many years she was like, I don't know. I like gymnastics and I'm like, that's good, but you kind of have to have a goal. But she knew from the start that she doesn't want to be like her mom and mm-hmm. she doesn't want to do elite gymnastics or any compete because everybody's like, oh, are you going to compete for Romania or for US? And she's like, huh? <laughs> like, for my club? I don't know. So did your sons do gymnastics at all? Or? No, mm-hmm. my oldest one's not very good. He grew up in the gym mm-hmm. um, a little bit, but he never liked it. He's not good at gymnastics and he never liked it. And my little one kind of can be good, but he doesn't like it either. So okay. why why put them through a sport that they don't love it? So Aurelia's sons are really famous. And I didn't... And that's real- another thing that I don't follow. I don't follow it either, but I had no idea. Although I did see that... 
international gymnast posted a video of her i guess like doing yeah. gym, flipping in the street recently i don't know yes you'll have to check it out she I was have to check it out i would i keep talking i would like i would call her we text um mm. i don't know if we're friends on facebook um, I don't follow a lot of uh, people on Facebook that are mm -hmm. gymnasts or maybe we're just friends, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, um, but she was doing so yeah. she was doing something in the street because I guess they're big on TikTok, whatever that. And she oh. was she oh, filmed herself like dancing, doing gymnastics. It was something to watch. It's entertaining. Something so. to watch and then I'll probably I'll uh, call her and just like show me what you've done. Yes. Everybody's talking about it. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Well, thank you so much for coming on. This was so much fun, Daniela. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, this yeah. was fun. I was nervous, but no, be was gonna be nervous. Thank you so much.